friends, today we're gonna be, my cat's eating. <laughs> hey friends, today we're gonna be making four different pumpkin wood signs. I got the signs from Dollar Tree and I just kind of, you know, zhuzhed them up a bit. And I actually made mine double-sided. I can hear him eating, hold on. Anyways, I made my signs double-sided. So I actually just had two signs, but I did both sides. So it made four signs total. I don't know why I'm showing you like you don't know what four is. Anyway, so um, let's quit gabbing and let's start crafting. On this channel, I love to share DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. Starting off with DIY number one and number two, I'm tracing out this pumpkin shape onto some scrapbook paper and here's the key i put the paper face down and i put the pumpkin shape face down on top of it so that way when i trace it out and then i go back to cut it out it's going to be the right orientation i guess that's the word i mean it's all it's all going to be the right way especially like if i was doing the stem i would want to make sure that they're both facing the right way Now for the opposite side, I'm using this plaid paper, also from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just pressing down to get an outline of that raised part of that pumpkin. Just want to be able to be able to see where I've pressed down later to be able to cut it. And so as you can see, as I flip it over, you can see where it's indented and I'm just taking some scissors and cutting around and I'm going to be cutting out those three individual pieces because I'm going to be mod podging them on later. And then I'm taking some, it's either teal or aqua, I can't remember which color exactly, sorry y'all, but I'm just going to be painting that in between those raised shapes on the pumpkin. And then while I've got the paint out, <laughs> I had this little square that I got from Dollar Tree. It came in a pack of, I think, five or six. And it's actually kind of a thicker piece of wood. Um, so it's a little more substantial. Anyway, doesn't really matter though for what I'm using it for. As you can see, Captain's in the corner. But I'm just giving it a paint, a uh, coat of paint on the front because that's all you're gonna see. And then I'm putting a very thin layer of Mod Podge onto the raised parts of the pumpkin. And the key here is to do a very thin layer of Mod Podge and then gently press down your scrapbook paper. Now, this scrapbook paper is also, well, I mean, it feels like it's a little on the thicker side, so that's helping it not bubble up or wrinkle or anything like that. But as you can see, I'm putting another thin layer of Mod Podge on top to seal it. And then I have this happy fall wood cutout, word cutout thing. And I am just taking some Waverly Wax in the color Antique and I'm painting it on. And in a bit, I will take a damp cloth and wipe off the excess. I didn't feel like you could really see the letters, so I'm just taking a white paint pen and kind of not really distressing it and not really outlining it necessarily, but kind of outlining it. So to give the letters some more dimension and hopefully make them stand out a little bit more. I'm using a paintbrush to apply a thin layer, thin coat of Mod Podge. And it doesn't matter if you use the matte or glossy because we're going to be applying that scrapbook paper on top of it and just pressing down. This is a double-sided sign. So on the back, it's going to have the words happy fall again, just like I'm on each side, it's going to say happy fall. So I'm taking my white paint pen and just trying to highlight those letters a little bit, give it a little bit more dimension so they stand out. Now the Mod Podge has dried and I'm just taking my little finger sander and I'm going over the edges and just kind of sanding downward so that way the excess paper just kind of peels off. It gives it a really nice, it, it gives what I consider a nice clean edge and because you know it didn't cut it perfectly. <laughs> so this helps it, it look a little bit neater on my sign. Now I am going to be making a simple bow and this is, 
a Hawaiian skirt. It's from the summertime. I haven't really seen any of the Hawaiian skirts lately in the stores, but if you do, grab it because I like using this better than raffia because I just think, or is it raffia? Raffia, raffia, I don't know. Anyway, I like using this better just because I feel like it, it's easier to work with. And of course, you can see Socks is interested. Now I'm taking, I took, cut some thin strips of that same scrap of paper and I'm putting it all around the edges. And I have both brothers helping me. Socks is on the left, Captain's on the right. Anyway, so I thought I left enough space all the way around so that you could see some of that aqua color on the edge. But then when I laid it on the, that pumpkin there, it just all blends in together. If you see on that sign right there, you just really can't tell that there's like a, I mean, you can tell there's a sign on top, but it's, I don't know. I just, it needs to stand up more. We'll worry about that in a minute. Right now I'm taking some thumbtacks. You can get these at Dollar Tree and I'm just cutting off the pointy part because I'm going to use those as like little embellishments for this little square sign that's in the middle. And here I'm trying to show you the part I cut off. You can't really see it, but I tried. <laughs> I'm going to use my finger sander again to kind of rough up the head of that thumbtack because I'm going to be painting it in a minute and I think that will help the paint adhere a little bit better. Here's a little trick for you. Take some masking tape and place it sticky side up and then I used two pieces of tape on each end to hold it down and then I put my thumbtacks on there. You can put beads and stuff like that on there and it holds it in place while you're trying to paint it. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking some Mod Podge because I want to give it kind of a layer for the paint to, an additional like layer for the paint to grip to. And I'm taking some brown paint. I think it's nutmeg. It's probably nutmeg. I don't know. It's just brown paint though. It's not really going to matter because I'm painting another color on top. And I couldn't find my bronze color so I'm using gold and I'm hoping the brown and the gold kind of blend a little bit and make it look kind of bronzish. But anyway, that's what I'm doing. Now back to that square. It just wasn't popping enough for me. So I'm just taking some folk art paint. And I think it's the color black or something like that. And I'm going all the way around the edges and I'm going along that little strip, that thin strip that I see, see where I'm going That's where I'm painting. <laughs> Y'all can see where I'm painting. Anyway, I think that's going to help it pop a little bit more. Now this is the part where I am adding twine to the stem and I thought to myself, I don't know, maybe I had too much time on my hands that day, but I thought to wind it kind of up and down through the little hole, hanger hole there. You can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, this is really not necessary. It didn't really help it look any more finished than just wrapping it around regular. So. If it were me and I was doing this again, I would just skip that part. <laughs> so you can see what I was talking about winding it around at the top and then I'm going back in and now I'm going to wind it around it and I'm just hot gluing as I go so that it all stays in place and I'm just winding it around to the top. And for this side, I'm taking that square that I painted and did all the other stuff too and I'm hot gluing it to the center. And then I'm going to hot glue down the happy fall words that I used that Waverly wax on to the center of the little sign. I'm using my hot glue gun to add a little dab of hot glue, a little dollop of hot glue in the corner there. And I'm trying to push the thumbtack in because there's like a little bit of a stem to it. So I'm just trying to push it down, but I'm putting it in the corners. You can't really see it, but I do think it adds a little cute embellishment to it. I flip the sign over and I'm just taking this orange happy fall sign and I'm going to hot glue it to the front of the pumpkin. And now I'm taking that um, Hawaiian hula skirt raffia stuff and is raffia raffia tell me in the comments below how you pronounce it anyway so i'm just taking it i'm gonna tie take three strands 
and tie a simple bow on one side, flip it over, and I, I tied the three strands on the other side. So it's just kind of all, a lot of raffia going on at the top there. I needed a base for the sign, and I have not seen these at Dollar Tree in forever and a day. These came from my stash, but I don't know, like a year ago or so, Dollar Tree would have the tower tumbling blocks and as you can see, they'd be a brown color and then the natural wood color. So I'm just going to take the brown ones since they're already painted and I'm going to use that to make the base for this sign. To create the base, I'm putting just like a little bit of wood glue and hot glue on the end of a tower tumbling block and I'm gluing those together. I'm going to do two sets of three end to end like that and then I'm going to do another set where it's two together end to end three of them. I hope that that doesn't make sense. You, you're going to kind of see what I did in a second. <laughs> I started out by gluing that set of three end to end to the sign and then it just didn't feel that stable so I created two more rows of the end to end three of them and I glued them together <laughs> I'm not explaining this very well and I don't think I have a picture of how I did that but I I made a base of so it was essentially it was two like a pair glued long ways like two of the two of those three two of those things like right there that I got my hands glued side by side that put that on the bottom and it made it a little bit more stable anyway you do you but that's how I did it and I'm sorry I didn't show you better how I actually did it but this is how one side turned out this is the happy fall orange side as you can see I added some Spanish moss to the bottom that stuff is really very messy anyway they also had some potpourri I think I got this last year from Dollar Tree it still smells y'all but um, I just thought it'd be cute to kind of add some like little you know like pine cones in there and those little prickly things those are actually from Hobby Lobby so that's how that side turned out and here's the other side I do think adding that black paint helped that little square pop a little bit more so it didn't just look all one-dimensional and then you know a little Spanish moss and that potpourri stuff at the bottom. I think it turned out really, really cute. Did you know that I have a crafting group on Facebook? It's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. I run that with my friend Sarah from Jujube DIY and um, it's fun. People share the projects that they're working on and every single Sunday, if you're a creator, you can leave a link in the um, Spotlight Sunday little post. It's fun. Come join us. The link will be in the description box below. You can still find these pumpkin shapes at Dollar Tree because this just, I just filmed this the other day. So pick up one of these and that's what we're going to use to make DIY number three and number four. Again, these are double sided signs. So I'm just taking some Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I think plaster is a warmer color than just the white. The white's just a little too stark for me. So I'm just giving it a coat of paint on one side. We're going to be making buffalo check, y'all. So I put, um, look at me trying to measure like that's really going <laughs> to. Anyway, so I put a line of painter's tape down and I'm using a little piece of painter's tape as a spacer and I'm just doing horizontal lines like that. I'm going to take Waverly chalk paint in the color moss and it's not, it's celery. Anyways, I'm going to paint that. And before it dries, I'm going to start peeling back that painter's tape. And those lines look crisp, y'all. Look, here we go again. Another one. Crisp lines. What? Another one. And the last one. So now I'm going to do this horizontally. Of course, I didn't need to wait until the paint was dry. And I'm using that little piece of painter's tape as a spacer again. And just putting the lines horizontally. Now, before this, before you do anything, you're going to go back in and mark where you painted before 
and put an X on the like squares that you didn't paint. Then you're going to go in and paint. Using those lines and the X's that we just marked as a guide, I'm going to paint over this. Now this is where you could actually use the third color. Um, you paint a base color, then use a lighter, uh, you know, dark color, then use your darkest color here. I'm not doing that. I'm just using the same color because that's the look I'm going for. And then before it dries, I like to go ahead and pull off the tape because I don't want anything drying and sticking together. And then you risk pulling off paint and stuff like that. So just very carefully pull off your painter's tape. Now we're flipped it over. Okay. Don't get confused. I'm not redoing the Buffalo check. I'm doing a different a little painting job here and I'm just marking off where I, you know, so that my paint doesn't get everywhere. And I'm taking that Waverly moss color again and or maybe is that the darker coat? No, that must be the that's the celery. <laughs> that's Waverly Mo Waverly chalk paint in the color celery painting the bottom and then I'm going to paint the top with Rust-Oleum's chalk ultramatte paint in the color charcoal. I haven't used that in a long time. It's actually one of my favorites. And of course, I do pull off the tape before it's dry because I don't like anything setting and therefore, you know, possibly pulling up paint. So now I'm taking that same painter's tape that I marked off before and I'm putting it along the edge because I'm going to take Waverly Wax in the color Antique and I'm going to paint that on in the middle. And then I'll use a damp cloth to kind of wipe off the excess. Now I have two wood signs, little wood words, I guess, and they both say hello fall. And for one of them, I'm going to be painting them the color terracotta. And the other one is going to be the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. Hey, y'all just popping in to say, if you're enjoying today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe while you're down there. If you haven't already, leave me a comment. All those things help YouTube notice me just a little bit more. And I really do appreciate the support. So um, thanks. Okay, back to crafting. Y'all, I haven't used jute twine in a hot minute. And here we go. My second video, um, recent video using jute twine. So I'm going along the edge and I do have a detailed hot glue gun. That's the kind that I always use. So I'm just doing a little thin bead of the hot glue, working small sections at a time because I don't want the glue to dry. And I'm going around and I'm just pressing that jute twine all along the edge. And when I get to the top, I'm just going to hot glue around that jute twine and wrap it around and hot glue as I go. When I get to the very end, I start fraying. Um, well, it's not the very end, but anyway, I get to the end and I start fraying and taking apart the strands of the jute twine. And then I'm going to kind of add a little bit of hot glue, very carefully try to twist them together. I don't show you this part, so that's why I'm explaining it, but you'll see what I do in just a second. So that's how my little jute twine stem looks. I kind of got that idea from Sarah from GGB DIY. She did one on a mini pumpkin and I liked the idea because I thought it looked kind of like a stem would look. Then I'm taking the plaster the one, the Hello Fall that I painted in the plaster Waverly chalk paint. And I'm going to be hot gluing that to the bottom right of this little sign. And I flip that sign over and I'm taking the orange or actually terracotta Hello Fall words and I'm hot gluing them in the middle. Kind of think I should have done it in the corner again, but they're in the middle. And here's where I got on the struggle bus, y'all. I was trying to make like a little bow to go at the top with some flowers. And so I don't, I just, ugh, I don't know. It was just not coming together that easily for me. So I ended up getting a small piece of craft stick and I start gluing, trying to glue all of that to the little craft stick thing. And then 
I ended up making this little awareness ribbon, a little bow. So you can see me. I'm trying to glue everything to these, this little popsicle stick thing. That didn't work super great. And, but you know, I mean, it worked or it ended up working okay. It was a struggle bus, y'all. <laughs> I don't even know what to tell y'all. You're probably watching this going, no, don't do it that way. But that's the way I did it. And so this is how it looks. And the idea is I would, um, why is this not a video? I don't know. Um, oh, here's my random video. So the idea is I would put a Velcro, piece of Velcro at the top. And then that way I can put it on one side. And if I want to use the other side, I just flip it over and I can put the little bow thing on the other side. And as you can see, I put a little raffia bow situation in the middle there. And here's another look at that other one. The hello fall in this one, it just kind of like blends in. You don't see it. Nothing's making it stand out. Wow, the camera. <laughs> Who's the cameraman on this one? So the, the hello fall is just not standing out enough for me. So I don't know. Any ideas on how to fix that or what you would do differently? Let me know in the comments below. It just nothing, nothing came to my mind when I created it. I am so glad you joined me today. I really do appreciate the company and I hope you enjoy the crafts that I make. And if you make, if you make a version of it, tag me if it's on Instagram, if it's here on YouTube or anything like that, tag me because I'd love to see what you created. And don't forget if you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's our gray house, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.